This is section 1-2, analyzing graphs of functions and relations. Your I can statements for this section. I can use graphs of functions to estimate the function values and to find domains, ranges, y-intercepts, and zeros of the function. We're also going to be exploring symmetries of graphs and identifying even and odd functions. You need to remember from Algebra 2 that the domain is the input or the x values of a function and the range is the output or the y values of a function. So if we take a look at this graph of f of x, we need to find the domain and we need to find the range. Now remember domain is the x values, so we want to move from left to right and make sure each of our x values has a corresponding y value. As you can see, we have a closed circle at an x value of negative 8. So for our domain, it's a closed circle, so we use a square bracket. It's starting at negative 8, and we have x values all along until we get to right here. At negative 4, that is an open circle, which means there is not a y value that corresponds. So from negative 8 to negative 4, and that's going to be a curly bracket because it is an open circle. We have values of x that have corresponding values for y. We also, from negative 4, if we keep going to the right, we still have x values. And since we have this arrow, it means it's going to continue going to the right forever. So we say from negative 4 to infinity. For the domain, I'm sorry, that was domain. For the range, we're looking at the y value, so we're looking from the bottom to the top. And if we notice, this scale is twos. So if we come down here, our first y value that we have is at negative 10. That is still a closed circle, so it is a square bracket. And if we go up through here, we still have x values that correspond to each y. Now when we get to this one, we do have an open circle here, but if we look at our graph on the right, there is a part on the graph here. So it does have a value when y is equal to positive 4. And we are going to continue having y values all the way up. So our range is from negative 10 to infinity. A point where the graph intersects or meets the x or y axis is called an intercept x-intercepts occur when the y value is 0, and y-intercepts occur when the x value is 0. The graph of a function can have 0, 1, or more inter x-intercepts, but if it is a function, it can only ever have one y-intercept. The zeros of a function are just the x-intercepts on the graph of the function. The roots are the solutions to the equation. So they're the exact same thing, but when we're talking about a graph, we're talking about the zeros. When you're talking about the solutions for x on an equation, we're talking about the roots. So if we take a look at the graph, we want to approximate the zeros from the graph, and then we're actually going to find them algebraically. So if we look at the x-intercepts, we have one here, and we have one here. If we approximate those, we could say that we have an x-intercept at approximately negative 3 and a little bit more than 2, but less than 3, so about 2 and a half. Our y-intercept is down here. We can say that's approximately negative 15. Now we actually need to find those values. So to find them algebraically, to find x-intercepts, you plug in 0 for your y. To find y-intercepts, plug in 0 for your x. So if we find our x-intercepts first, we're going to plug in 0 for our value of y or our value of f of x. Now to be able to solve this, you are going to have to factor this problem. 
So if we factor this problem, we see what multiplies to get 2x squared, which is 2x and x. We see what multiplies to get negative 15, which is negative 5 and 3. But when we're done multiplying, we want that inside part to be a positive 1. 2 times 3 is a positive 6. Negative 5 times 1 is negative 5. And 6 minus 5 does give us 1. So we have factored this correctly. Now we just need to set each of these equal to 0 and solve for x. So our two x-intercepts are negative 3 and 2.5. Now we need to find our y-intercept. To find your y-intercept, you plug in 0 for your x's. So to find our y-intercept, we're going to say y is equal to 2 times 0 squared plus 0 minus 15. 0 squared is 0, and 2 times 0 gives us 0. If we add 0 to 0, we still have 0, and 0 minus 15 gives us a negative 15. So we have a y-intercept at negative 15.